So good evening today is our time to have our season time of prayer. Um, we are so happy that we are the opportunity uh, to pray together morning and evening. And to have this time with God, I think it's, it's time to look in for his face and, and giving our life to him so we can see what he wants for us. So we're going to continue to use common worship book. And today in the evening, we are in page 269. And uh, we're going to have a couple of reading. And the first one is a Psalm, Psalm 13. The second one in the Old Testament is Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter three, verse a to the end and john chapter 21 from verse 1 to 14. that will be our reading today so let's prepare ourselves to have this time with god taking the time and dedicating that moment to him to think about his word and pray Let's start it. Oh God, may a speed to save us. Oh Lord, may haste to help us. In your resurrection, oh Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and pray forever from the deep water of death. You brought your people to new birth by raising your son to, to life in a throne. Through him, dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvelous light, may our light reflect his glory and our lives respeed the endless son. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. We continue in page 217. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer risen before you, O oh God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to have our prayer reading that is in John 13. It's a very beautiful psalm, and it's a psalm. It's a song psalm, like poem. I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication. How long will you forget me, O Lord, forever? How long will you hid your faith from me? How long should I have anguish in my soul and grief in my heart day after day? How long should my enemy triumph over me? Look up on me and answer, O oh Lord my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep in there. Last my enemy say, I have prevalent against him and my voice rejoiced that I had felt. But I put my trust in you, a steadfast love. My heart will be rejoiced in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt so bountifully with me. I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication. Jesus Christ, Son of God, 
who pass through the dark sleep of death. Remember those who cry to you in chain and silence and defeat, and rise them to your right life, for you are alive and reign forever. Amen. We're going to back to that later and we're going to pray because I want to pray and, and, and pray you thinking that A, everything is back. Look like everything is again to us. Everything is again. Our enemy, the people around. I hear some people talking about now how bank is denied money to them and people losing everything, losing job, losing houses, losing many things. But you know what David say, but I put my trust in you as steadfast love. My heart will be rejoiced in your salvation. That amazing, amazing word that David declared about, about God. So we're going to, you know, prepare ourselves with all that word to bring all that prayer to him when we are in a time of prayer. Put our confidence in his steadfast love. Now our reading is in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 18. At that time, I charged you as follows. Also the Lord, your God, has given you this land to occupy. All your troops should cross over arm and the vanguard of your Israelis king. Only your wife, your children, and your livestock, and now that you have much livestock, should stay behind in the town that I have given to you. When the Lord gives rest to you, kindred, as you, as you and they too have occupied the land that the Lord your God has given them beyond the Jordan, then each of you may return to the property that I have given to you. And charge Joshua as well at the time, saying, you own I have seen everything that the Lord you God has done to these two kings, so the Lord will do to all the kingdom into which you are up about to cross. Do not fear them, for it's the Lord you God who fight for you. At the time, two I I entered the Lord saying. O oh Lord God, you have only begun to show you servant, you great, you greatest, and you mighty. That God is heaven on earth can perform deed and mighty act like yours. Let me cross over to see the good land beyond the Jordan, the good hill country, and the Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not hit me. The Lord said to me, enough from you, never speak to me of this matter again. Go up to the top of the peace hand and look around you to the west, to the north, to the, to the south, and to the east. Look well, for you should not cross over this Jordan, but charge Joshua and encourage and entreat him because is he who should cross over the head of these people and who should secure the possession of the land, then you will be seen. So remain it in the valley opposite to Beth Hor. That is a very difficult word. And God was leading the people. And it's so sad because that's the moment that. Then was Jews arriving, and for many reasons that uh, maybe we need to read, Moses couldn't see the promised land. And we need to be careful because sometimes we're fighting a lot, and we're fighting a lot, and we're building, and we work hard, and we don't see the promised land. And we need to ask him, 
why we don't see the promised land. But we're going to continue our reading. And the next reading is John chapter 21. From verse 1 to 14. After the thing, Jesus showed himself again to the disciple by the Sea of Tiberia. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathanael of Canaan of Galilee, the son of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going to fish. They say to him, we will go with you. They went out and go into the boat, but the night they cost nothing. Just after they break, Jesus stood on the, on the branch, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to, to hold it on the because where because there were so many fish that the disciple who Jesus loved said to Peter, Is the Lord. When Simon Peter hear that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes for he, has, he was neck and jumping into the lake. But the other disciple came into the boat, driving at the net full of feet, for they were no far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. Then they had gone ashore. They saw a charcoal fire there with fish on in and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just cash. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net at sword full of large fish, and hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many net was not turned. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now now no one of the disciples there to ask him, who are you? <laughs> because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciple after he was risen from there. I think one of the powerful moments, huh? I love that moment when then didn't identify that was Jesus and he asking again, doing again, and then did, and then cash all that fish. But I love the word that John, the, the young John say, Peter is the Lord. Sometimes we need to know that is the Lord. Yeah, is the Lord, the Lord is there. Is the Lord that is asking you to do again. Is the Lord that is with you again, again, the third time in a week that Jesus appeared to them. He said, Peter is the Lord. And it's uh, amazing because sometimes we forget, uh, we forget that Jesus is there asking you and me. I am here doing again. Trust me, trust me. I want to say to you today that is the Lord. Is the Lord with you? He is with you. So let's continue in page 272. The Lord is my strength and my son. He has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my son. He has become my salvation. I should not die, but live and declare the word of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my son. He has become my salvation. 
Amen. Let's read the, the Magnificent now. The stone which the builder reject had become the chief corn stone. Alleluia. My soul proclaimed the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoiced in God, my, my Savior. He had looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud of the consent, casting down the mighty from the throne and lifting up the lonely. He has filled the angry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestor, Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and should be forever. Amen. The stone which the builder rejects has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. We're going to have a time of prayer now, but I, I think in the in, in, in the in the three reading we have beautiful pictures that we can take it now and thinking. The picture of the psalm when he declared his believing in God. And I love that you're taking that picture with you now when you're praying. I put my trust in you, a steadfast love. My heart will be rejoiced in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt so bountifully with me. So keeping that word, keeping the word of Moses, trust until the end. Trust until the end that God is the one that's going to fight him for us. In no our strength, it's God fighting for us. And that last word of Jesus with his disciple. Sometimes we don't see the Lord, but we sometimes need a friend than telling us, don't worry, Vicky, don't worry, Steve, it's the Lord. It's the Lord with you. So we're going to have some time of prayer now. And I want you taking your time to, uh, to pray your own prayer. Pray what you need today. We, we're praying today for our peace, yeah, as, as all that's more, even if we do. And we pray for individual, individualities and seeing that you need. We're going to pray today for us, for our own peace and for the peace of the world. But we want to pray as well for our need and what God has been done. I want to, to encourage you to worship God today. Worship Him today. You know, will we try maybe uh, next, uh, uh, next week to have some music as well. So you can worship God in a time of prayer. And, and worship Him and, and, say, uh, and tell Him thank you. Thank you for what He has been done. Lord, thank you because sometimes we need someone that tell us that you are there. You are there waiting for us. You are there waiting for us with fish and bread. A bread that I didn't buy and fish that I didn't cash. But you are there with them because you are our God and you serving them, you giving them fish, Lord, and bread. How wonderful, Lord, breakfast, giving from your hands. Thank you because you still provide for us. Even when the war is ending in many difficulties, you still provide for us. Lord, thank you, because on the cross, you, you love us. You was there and you love us. You give your life for us. In your hand, you have our life and you have been blessing us. Thank you, Lord, for your hands of life to us. Thank you for the blessing that you're giving to us through your almighty 
love to us, Lord. Almighty God, we love you and we, Lord, pray and we hope that in you, grace, Lord, we're going to find ways to worship you in time like that, Lord, time of darkness. You're going to teach how to pray. You're going to teach us how to pray, how to go to your presence, how to find your face, Lord. We want, Lord, that you're giving us the strength today. Lord, I'm coming to you with all our burdens. Lord, we have so many needs, but you know all of them. And I love the fact that you say to the Israelis, it's, it's me that going to fight him with you, Lord. And I pray today that all my friends and my people of St. Matthew understand that it's you that are fighting for us. You are the one that fighting for us, Lord. Thank you, because you are still there for us, Lord. No matter how many difficulties, you are still there for us. Lord, we want to look inside ourselves and find where we need to get better. And you put your hand inside us and heal us, Lord. Heal our soul and our spirit. We want to look for you, Lord, and we want to bless you, and we want to worship you in spirit and truth. We want to take in that time to pray with all our heart, Lord, with all our soul, to you, Lord, and have all the honor and all the glory, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, because you're giving us the opportunity to be closer to God. You extend your hands and you let us closer to your hand. Lord, forgive us, I ask in you today, when we want to pray for our politician. Forgive us, Lord, because we know have been praying in the right way for them. We only criticize them, Lord, but today we want to pray for them. We want to bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Then you live with them, Lord, in the way that you need to live with them, and especially for our first minister. We pray for him, Lord. We pray for him that you bless him and you give him wisdom, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray for them, Lord. We want to pray for our leaders in the Church of England. Lord, we pray for the Bishop Pete and Bishop Sarah and for Richard. We pray that you give wisdom to them in that time of darkness, that they can lead your church to a better places. Thank you for them. Bless them, Lord, abundantly, abundantly, Lord. Pray for them, Lord. <coughs> Lord, we pray today then your Holy Spirit come to us. <clears throat> we pray today, Lord, that in you present, we can feel you, Lord, leading us, Lord, to more time with that, and we can be closer to you. Lord, I want to pray for my elderly people in St. Matthew's Church. Take care of them, Lord, giving them, Lord, peace and joy, Lord. And remind them, remain them that we love them. Remember, Lord, that they, they are the people that have been following you for so long, Lord. We want you to bless them, Lord. We like to pray for our children, Lord. The ones that have been go back to school, the ones that are still at home. Bless them. Bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Bless them in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we want to pray, Lord, for all the families in church, Lord. Giving them you peace and you love. And Lord, I pray the very special way that today when the day is ending and we go to bed, we can remember who you are in us. You are our Lord and God. You are our Lord and God, Lord. You are our Messiah. You are our God, Lord. So thank you for your love to us. Thank you for the sacrifice you did in the cross for us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. So thank you for today. We're going to finish praying the Lord's prayer. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven, giving us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespasses against us. And lead us no in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you for that evening. I hope you have a wonderful night and see you soon. God bless you.